While the right to life is being restored, California has doubled down by threatening to use Texas's legislative strategy to get rid of abortion as a way to undermine the Second Amendment. We'll look into this, plus highlight some of the disappointing views some of the conservative Supreme Court justices have made known in a ruling in today's analysis behind the news, where we provide the perspective and the plan to save American liberty and independence. You'd have to be living under a rock to not see the commotion the media and leftist politicians and organizations have created to what seems to be the beginning of an end to Roe v. Wade. Just type in Roe v. Wade Supreme Court and look at the online news mentions. For instance, NBC News howled, what happens to abortion rights if the Supreme Court overrules Roe v. Wade? CBS News rolled out a poll that claimed to find a majority supports keeping Roe v. Wade in place. Another of the poll results of the 1,650 people was that a majority of Catholics support keeping Roe in place. Really? These must be Biden and Pelosi Catholics because there are many, many Catholics in the pro-life movement that would disagree with keeping the 1973 court ruling. Even the Pope himself has condemned abortion as murder, and he certainly cannot be mistaken for a right-winger. Most interestingly enough, Fox News reported that their poll and an ABC poll indicated a majority wanted to see the 1973 ruling stand. One of their graphics indicated that a majority of registered voters who are Republicans say they want it to stand. Perhaps this shows you the main hurdle of those that are pro-life and have long battled their so-called friends in the legislature and others in the movement who have created an industry of wanting to get rid of Roe v. Wade, but who seem to be more interested in keeping alive that industry than actually accomplishing its mission. CNN reported Roe v. Wade has been the law of the land for nearly 50 years. Will that matter? This brings up an interesting conundrum for most, as that statement does not square away with the Constitution. The first sentence of the Constitution after the preamble will tell you all you need to know. It says, all legislative powers here and granted shall be vested in a Congress of the United States, which shall consist of a Senate and House of Representatives. So here's a math quiz for you. If all legislative powers are in Congress, then how much is left over for the Supreme Court? Take your time, I'll wait. Article 6 mentions something about the Constitution and laws of the United States being the supreme law of the land, but only when these laws are made in pursuance of the Constitution, namely by following the limitations of the Constitution. What laws did Congress legally pass to allow for the killing of babies in the womb? After all, doesn't our founding documents point to how all men are created equal? and that governments are instituted to protect our God-given rights, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, as stated in the Declaration of Independence? And how are we supposed to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, as declared in the preamble of the Constitution, when we have permitted over 60 million babies to be legally killed since 1973? The Constitution provides for tools to fix such a breach of responsibility in order to protect our most vulnerable. Congress could have impeached and replaced the Supreme Court justices who ruled this way, as the ruling certainly would not fit the definition of good behavior in office as stated in Article 3, Section 1. Congress could have even limited the appellate jurisdiction of the court by exercising Article 3, Section 2, Clause 2 but it was never done or even attempted. It had to come from the states to get the court ruling overturned, and Texas has mightily and gladly stepped up to attempt to kick Roe v. Wade into the dustbin of history. But will it happen? According to courthousenews.com, the Supreme Court authorized Texas abortion providers on Friday to proceed in their challenge of the state's near-total ban on abortions a rule that will remain in place while the case proceeds. Issuing their decision just over a month after oral arguments, the justices still managed a split on somewhat ideological lines. 
Justice Neil Gorsuch wrote the lead opinion, followed by Justices Samuel Alito, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett. The liberal wing of the court joined an opinion concurring in judgment, but dissenting in part by Chief Justice John Roberts. Justice Clarence Thomas issued his own partial dissent. Now, those following the Supreme Court decisions over the years will not be surprised by Chief Justice John Roberts, who has actually been a pivotal liberal justice when it counts. He wrote, The clear purpose and actual effect of SB 8 has been to nullify this court's rulings. It is, however, a basic principle that the Constitution is the fundamental and paramount law of the nation. It is emphatically the province and duty of the Judicial Department to say what the law is. Whoa, he certainly nailed the first part, but that second part? The founders expected the states to nullify the federal government where appropriate. James Madison, the father of the Constitution, said states have the right and are duty bound to interpose. Yet, Roberts needs to go back to the founders to learn separation of powers and that the Constitution is only the supreme law of the land when adhered to its constitutional limitations. Thomas Jefferson wrote in 1803, nothing in the Constitution has given the judiciary a right to decide for the executive more than to the executive to decide for them. Both magistracies are equally independent in the sphere of action assigned to them. The opinion which gives to the judges the right to decide what laws are constitutional and what are not, not only for themselves in their own sphere of action, but for the legislative and executive also in their spheres, would make the judiciary a despotic branch. Each branch is a check onto the other, and the states are checks onto the federal government as a whole. Justices Sotomayor and Roberts agreed that the role of the Supreme Court is at stake. And let's hope so. Largely due to the ignorance and apathy of we the people, the states and the executive and legislative branches, the days of judicial activism have helped to get this court to its current unconstitutional position of allowing court rulings to have the weight of legislative action. The founders vehemently disagreed with this, and it's the same despotic nature that is driving California Governor Gavin Newsom to ban assault weapons the same way Texas restricts abortions, according to the Epic Times. It reported the Supreme Court on Friday dismissed the U.S. Department of Justice's challenge to the Texas law, previously known as SB 8, which essentially bans all abortions after six weeks of pregnancy and delegates enforcement to private citizens. The vote was 8-1, to one, with Justice Sonia Sotomayor being the sole dissenter. Sotomayor argued in her dissenting opinion that the court, by its decision, effectively invites other states to refine the Texas model for nullifying federal rights. In response to the high court's decision that leaves the Texas law untouched, Newsom said he has ordered his staff to work with the state legislature and the Attorney General's office on a measure that would allow private citizens to sue anyone who manufactures, distributes, or sells a so-called assault weapon, firearm parts, or a firearm built from parts in California. Further into the article, it reported, the Firearm Policy Coalition, a Sacramento-based Second Amendment advocacy group, said they predicted that Newsom would use the Texas model against the constitutional right to keep and bear arms, and that they are prepared to challenge policy changes he proposed head on. The group saw a court victory in June when the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of California overturned a long-standing ban on assault weapons. In addition, baby-killing advocates in California are seeking ways to create a reproductive freedom state if Roe v. Wade is overturned, according to CNN. Fox News has reported that Democratic Senator Jean Shaheen has said, I hope the Supreme Court is listening to the people of the United States because I think if you want to see a revolution, go ahead, outlaw Roe v. Wade and see what the response is of the public, particularly young people, because I think that will not be acceptable to young women or young men. Clearly, she is not seeing the revolution that has been sweeping this country for quite some time although it's not really a revolution as much as it is a return to the founding principles of America. We the people have had enough, 
and we are using all the tools the founders gave us to rid society of big government and its death machine it created back in 1973. For more information about ending abortion in the U.S., check out the latest issue of The New American titled The Gift of Life, as written in the cover story by the fearless Father James Altman. It goes without saying that one need not be a Catholic, a Protestant, or a member of pretty much any other belief system to fully appreciate the gift of life. And something similar can be said of the importance of freedom in this country. It goes without saying that one need not be a Republican, a Democrat, or even an American to fully appreciate the gift of freedom so enshrined in our constitutional republic. If you're interested in protecting your personal freedom and getting rid of big government, join the John Birch Society today. All links are in the video description. I'm Bill Hahn for the John Birch Society. Until next time, stay informed, stay active, and be bold, patriots.